Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. In today's short lesson, we are going to look at playing at DMP and I'm gonna give you some useful tips to apply over the board at this score. Now I hear you ask, what exactly is DMP? Well, DMP simply means double match point and it is a score such as 4-4 in a match to five or 3-3 three, three for cube is turned to two where that game would decide the match. Now DMP is also other scores too. For instance, if you were four away from winning and I was three away and the cube was on four, then that game would also be DMP because a winner of that game would indeed win the match. Now with DMP, the rules are slightly different because gammons and backgammons have no value at all. The cube is out of play. Now, all that matters at DMP is maximizing your wins through your checker play, moving your checkers to maximize your wins. A DMP is actually a very good way to focus solely on checker movements over the board. So if you want as a training exercise to disregard the cube for a moment and simply focus only on checker movement to maximize wins. And there is really no better way than playing DMP games on XG. So I'm going to show you some positions and I'm going to give you some useful tips so you can apply at this score. So let us get started. Now, in his first position, we have an opening move of 6 4 for white at DMP. How do you choose to play this? Now the right play at DMP is to run 24 to 14. And the first rule is that the race is more important. We simply want to win. We want to bring our checkers home as fast and easily as we can, bear them off and win the game and the match. Now backgammon is ultimately a racing game, but at DMP that is more important. And then you can see there on the left hand panel, that this move does indeed have the highest winning percentage at 50.4%. Now, of course, at a normal score, you would make a different play, 24 to 18, 13 to nine, and a gammon go, you would make the two point, but a DMP, you make the move that wins the most, and that is the running play. Here, 10 pips is an above average dice roll, so use it to your advantage get running and hope you're missed. The race is more important at DMP. Let's look at the second position where white has a double five as an opening reply. Now, the correct move here is to simply make the three point now, of course, it's very tempting to make the blitzing play, but blitzing wins more gammons, but loses more games. And here at DMP, we are not interested in a gammon or indeed a backgammon. We only need one point to win the match. We don't need two points or three points. So gammons and backgammons are irrelevant. Blitzing game plans lack value um, at DMP because they tend to trade off gammons for game wins. It's better not to adopt this strategy at a DMP score. Also, the danger of making the blitzing play here is we strip our eight point and leave a number of indirect shots. If we were hit back, that would set us back in the race. And remember, as before, the race is more important. Rule two, the blitting game plan lacks value. Simply play safe and make the three point, not leaving any shots for green to hit back in return. Number three, white to play a five two. Now here, the right move is to break the anchor and to play seven to five. 
And you can see there on the left hand panel, it has slightly more wins, 32.5 as opposed to 32.3 and so on beneath that. So again, we are moving our checkers to maximize our wins. Now sure, this loses more gammons, but we don't care about losing a gammon. And rule three is anchors are devalued at DMP. Now normally we hold onto an anchor for really as long as we can, so we're not gammoned, we're not hit loose and then green closes the board and then suddenly we're losing a lot of gammons. But here we don't care about losing a gammon. We only need one point, our opponent only needs one point. So here, although risky, we make the running play to win more games because we're not worried about losing a gammon. And here, of course, there are some duplications of fours. And even if we are hit, we do have 20 rolls to re-enter into Green's board. So simply run, make the racing play to win more games. Rule number three, anchors are devalued because we're not worried about losing a gammon. Number four, white's the player 5-3 at DMP. Now the right move is 17 to nine, which again wins more games. Now DMP, because you are not worried about losing a gammon or losing a backgammon, stay back for maximum contact and marginally more wins. Now at a normal score, you would escape the checker on a 22 point to avoid losing extra gammons or even backgammons. But here it's simply better to hold back and had that contact value. So here at a normal score you would escape, but at DMP you wait and hope green has some awkward bear in rolls, leaves a shot, and then you turn that around by a late hit and your strong five point home board. So there you can see 17 to nine does indeed have the most wins, but at a normal score, it would be more correct to escape that checker. Now back games are often a good strategy at DMP because again, you don't really care about losing a gammon or a backgammon because you're losing the match regardless. So having those checkers back for maximum contact, being a thorn in your opponent's side as he bears in is often a good strategy. But of course, back games and normal scores can often result in you being gammoned or losing a backgammon occasionally too. Rule number four, stay back for contact. And this is a final one, rule number five. White's the player three, two. How do you play this? So here, the right move, the right move to win the most is 18 to 15. 13 to 11, as you can see. Now, at a normal score, 18 to 13 would be right to reduce gammons because green does have a three point board. At DMP, it's better to play looser and maintain contact to try to contain green's back checker. Green wants to extricate that back checker from our home board, bring it round and win. We want to make his life as difficult as possible by remaining um, posed in the um, outfield, ready to attack him, keeping that contact for when he tries to bring that checker round. Notice also that Green does have three stripped points in the outfield with only two checkers on three points. So that means a lot of Green's numbers are indeed going to leave shots for us to hit back. Playing 18 to 13 would ma massively reduce our contact value. So simply 18 to 15, 13 to 11, not worrying about the gammon loss, taking extra risks for contact and to improve the wins. So notice green's points are stripped. Green has a checker to bring round. We want to poise our checkers, get them ready there to defend against that checker coming around attack that when he rolls something awkwardly 
and then win more games. So there we have it. These are five rules that you can apply a DMP over the board. Firstly, the race is more important as we saw there in the opening roll of a 6-4. Rule number two, the blitzing game plan simply lacks value because we do not need gammons or backgammons. We just want to win the game with a point. Rule number three, Anchors are devalued. We can run off the anchors earlier because we're not worried about being gammoned um, in return. Rule number four, stay back for contact. If you are massively down in the race, keep your checkers back in your opponent's home board, hoping for a late shot to maximise your wins. And rule number five, take risks to improve wins. Expand your contact zone move your checkers, leave blots, try to prevent your opponent winning, don't worry about getting gammoned, wait for shots to win the game. So there we are, five tips which I hope are useful that you can use add DMP over the board. Now DMP games do come up an awful lot in matches, in many tournaments, when you are one away, one away in a match to 11, and adopting some of these rules and applying them over board will certainly, hopefully, win more games for you. So, good luck. Uh, see you next Wednesday. Please uh, like and subscribe. See you next time. Goodbye.